to the bill, dire threat to mankind, the planet can't wait. This bill, of course, assumes that there's an existential threat that threatens all of us in the world, and we in, Hill, in Illinois are going to stand in the forefront of fixing it. We're going to show the world how clean energy can save it from itself. Tell that to the people in South and Central America, in Asia, in Sub-Saharan Africa, who are looking and saying, I would love to have a light bulb in my house. I don't want to have to burn dung in my living room to stay warm in the winter. We're not faced with a climate problem here. We're faced with a risk problem, a risk problem. By which I mean that nobody knows what the average temperatures are going to be in 50 years. Nobody knows what the sea levels are going to be in 50 years. And if they say they do, they're lying to you. What we're confronted was, with is a range of possible outcomes from 1 to 100 percent, and by assuming the answer for all those possible outcomes that could be bad is 100 percent, we completely take off the table all the possible mitigations that can either reduce the risks or lessen the consequences of what might come. Don't discount that, uh, uh, and don't, you know, there are risks and mitigations that uh, lessen the outcomes at acceptable cost, at acceptable cost, both economic and in terms of liberty, and don't discount the latter. Because a government control of energy generation suffocates innovation and economic growth and will ultimately result in government control of its use, as is being seen in California with rolling blackouts. Think of the incredible transformation that has gone through in the telecommunication industry over the last 20 years. We've gone from co sending conversations over copper wire to sending them over fiber optics made of sand, and now we're using wavelengths. We need to use that same sort of thinking for energy in terms of nuclear power and carbon sequestration. Innovation isn't planned. It happens when people try to solve problems in a system that encourages and rewards problem solving. How much economic dynamism are we willing to sacrifice by completely shutting an industry down and not giving it the opportunity to innovate? And what about nuclear? There's no discussion Amy in this Brewer, bill about nuclear. To a close, Representative. Amy? Amy, can I? Amy Grant is given three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Amy. There's no discussion in this bill other than the money that's being used to bail out or to subsidize the nuclear plants here, already here in Illinois. It's an aging fleet. It went online in the mid-'80s, and it can't last forever. Nuclear plays otherwise no part in this rush to energy, uh, in, in, to carbon-free energy, either in terms of baseload capacity or backup. Nuclear has its problems. It's never lived up to the promise of providing cheap and plentiful power. But to a great extent, that's a function of regulatory strangulation and liability concerns. Illinois. One of the big draws to Illinois is the, the low cost of power here in the state. And as has been pointed out, losing that cheap source of power, because you know darn good and well that that next five years, if you get what you're getting to want tonight, in, two, in five years when those subsidies run out and somebody comes and asks for more, what motivation is the, for you to give them? The environmental movement has been biased against nuclear since Three Mile Island in Chernobyl, without paying any attention to the advances that have been made in nuclear power over the last 20 years, small modular reactors that can be placed close to where their power is going to be used, which will not only cut down the cost of development, implementation, but transmission as well. 
The five-year subsidy is a banana peel. It's going to be pulled out from under the feet of the nuclear industry as soon as this bill passes because you're not going to have any motivation to give them anything. Technological advance is something that, again, doesn't happen by planning. It happens because people try to solve problems. What we have here is a bill that's full of goals without consequences, and it shuts down an entire industry with no guarantees that it's going to be replaced. We need a more optimistic and realistic environmentalism than is presented in this bill, which once again puts government in the position of picking winners and losers. We have problems but they'll only be solved through technological innovation and dynamism, and this bill does nothing, nothing to do so. So I'll finish with this question. How many renewable energy credits does it take to screw in a light bulb? I would say the answer is irrelevant, because if this bill goes to the extent that it promises to go, there isn't going to be enough power to light that light bulb. Vote no.